If you don't end up going with us, all we need is a sample envelope. We have these guys tested in Phoenix to make sure it'll run through the system that you're thinking of purchasing. We do that. We try to do that all up front, even before we go under contract, uh, to, to make sure everything's going to run smooth when the machine comes in. So. What's your turnaround time from PDF delivery to sample uh, test deck or actual ballot? Well, actually, for in person. So, uh, generally, like, so I, I'll tell you what we do with Monroe County. Monroe County is the one county we have in PA that's uh, we're printing precinct ballots, provisional ballots, and mail ballots. I should say absentee ballots, so M's and A's. So we do all that for them. Uh, we provide a turnaround time of between 48 and 72 hours for receipt of file. Uh, the initial file um, would fall into those timelines in the supplemental file. So we have some, some parameters around how many uh, voter records can be in supplemental files as it gets down to the wire. And in some of the smaller counties where your supplementals get under 200 pieces per day, We'll set you guys up with envelopes and instructions and everything that you need to assemble those and, and get them out from your office if it gets to be too low. Where are these machines made? They're made in Indianapolis. In the United States. That's important. Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette, Indiana. Isn't that Indianapolis? No. It's Lafayette. Lafayette. Yeah. Indiana, Indiana. Like I know, right? <laughs> 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 I actually thought it was like one for No, it's not like that. So I think earlier you, you said that mid size machine was not yet on the market. So is it on the market? And when so we had, we had a, a very limited number that we were trying to get ready for this year. Uh, we were trying to get about five, and we ended up with one. Um, so that's that one's been kind of spoken for since about June. Uh, we recently uh, took another look, and it's possible we might be able to get out a second. But I have contracts lined up for them where we've committed for the for the. Um, we've committed for actually for the primary, but because we might have one more uh, machine available, that's going to go to someone who's already committed. So you're talking about general election in 2023. Yes. Yeah. If we're talking about now. No, 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 no. But what is going to be generally available, I guess, is my question. Yes. Primary 2023. Yeah. Yep, primary 2023. Okay. And it's it's my job to configure the machine the right way, get a contract together that makes sense to everybody on your end, and get that signed before the end of the year so we can plan our installs for before the primary because it's already looking, uh, and these guys will tell you, it's just looking very busy already. And I want to okay. make sure I can accommodate everybody. I don't want to get invoice information, but will you send your terms and conditions to her yes. so that I can look at them in advance? Absolutely. Time in the yep. year. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, we could certainly follow up with another meeting after you've looked through that paperwork. It's a, it's not a terribly long contract, but it's 13 pages. A lot of it's boilerplate. There's usually questions. Um, we want to make sure everyone's understanding what they're getting with the service and maintenance, software and maintenance agreement. You, know, you understand your preventative maintenance um, visits. You understand how to get to us if you need us. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll come back at you. We always yeah. have a list of stuff. Yeah, and I'd be happy to come visit too. Like if we want to sit down at your place, you know, I've been traveling a lot through PA, and it'd be great to see to see your operation too. If that makes sense, of course. Also, time I'm taking pictures of my my envelopes that you guys can see, and some of these are getting rejected based off of what I shuffled into this, uh, into the deck that I have here. So, at the speed that, it's uh, it's 18,000 pieces per hour, but essentially, I am I am taking this picture and I can then upload it back to my voter registration system. So, let's just go ahead and send all these pieces through. As these pockets start to fill up, you can see the train pack gets printed based off of how many, how many pieces I've set within that specific pocket. So as you can see, I'm just continuously sending pieces through. I set this, I set this to five, five pieces, but obviously in an election setting, you want a little bit more than five pieces in your pocket. But as the pockets start to fill up, they'll start to move to the other pockets. Consistently, there we go. Okay. So, you might clear it up 
so a jam just happened, all of these are going to get sent to pocket 8, which is my overflow pocket, which means that all of these pieces really didn't know where they needed to be sorted, so we basically just send it back to you. So it's basically giving me the first piece, the last piece. It's just basically a quick reference to see what what content my trays have. So now might be a good time to explain how once the pockets are full, we move them into mail trays. Or Jerry uses the, these plastic pens. I've seen a lot of these in your offices as well. He's got racks where he stores them, but the tray tags can be affixed to the front. And what that does is it matches up to the auto file that the Agilis creates. It shows you where every piece that went through the machine is. So you know on the auto file where the tray tag, uh, the tray tag number is, you know what piece in that tray it is, and you're able to locate it quickly and easily. The goal, the goal is that it's quick and easy. So. It's a, it's a new process to get used to, but once you're used to it, you look at the audit file, you can find where the piece is, and you can uh, pull it to either confirm that, you know, you have a voter on the phone that wants to know if you've received it, or you can, I don't know, if people have questions or challenges, you have a, a way to get your hands on, on it quickly. Meanwhile, I'm also stamping, date stamping all of these that are getting sent through this well. So as you see those sheets there, I'm also applying the date and time that it was considered received. So this is the date and time stamp? Any questions so far? Is it date stamping? It does, yes. I'm not sure it has a monitor on that then too. I'm sorry, low splitting monitor and all that good stuff. Yeah, you're not running through it in an hour. Yeah, there, there is. Seven and seven and five, if you have any experience with the levels, the heat levels themselves on the date time frame. Is there a monitor for that? Um, there's not a monitor, but... They, there's like a measurement, right? Based off of how many pieces that you sent through, so you say, I'm uploading a new cartridge in this in this system, and then it's gonna take that count based off of how many. And that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not like a, a full-on measurement of the ink levels, but it's, a, it's an approximation based off of how many pieces you printed on. Right. That makes sense. So this is how much ink it uses each time. Well, yeah, I presumed it was a little bit. It wasn't my concern. I was concerned here. I'll run through it. And you realize you run through and there's no ink in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, that was my concern. So, no, nothing. Yep. Valid concern. Sure. During training and install, we encourage people to take those um, cartridges out in between elections gotcha. and have them. Okay. Uh, it just helps to extend the life. But they, they print quite a bit before they're even close to the air. Yeah, they last quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, yep. We haven't had to change. Oh, really? Wow. That's a plus one. <laughs> that is, that's a good fact. So basically, once I've, once I've finished my, my first pass, we won't necessarily get into the secret of that much, but uh, we'll want to talk about what it does. And yeah. So I, I can talk about that. Sure. Um, you know, the machine has quite ample capabilities for reading signatures, comparing signatures, and doing all these things that uh, a lot of our vote by mail states require. Um, uh, I, we understand where the legislation is re uh, regarding signatures in PA. So uh, the one thing that I like to highlight is it'll, it'll show you on screen if the, the uh, mail piece that goes through it doesn't have a signature by showing you a blank box next to a signature box from shore. And you can, you can mark it as no signature. Uh, there's a lot of other reject reasons that we can put in there. Uh, without a cure process in PA, that's kind of like down the road type of thing. And the point I like to make is that we feel as the legislation grows and changes around signatures, uh, we're going to be positioned perfectly for whatever that legislation becomes. And as we've seen a lot of states kind of mirror each other on these processes, I, you know, only time will tell, but uh, the takeaway I want for you guys to have is that we're able to, to detect no signature, and we're also able to do some other things that may become legislation as uh, we go down the road. So 
going back to the, the sheet that we have in front of us here, the appeals process, we basically, once we finish that first pass and then signature verification, what we would do is, in the case of, let's say, if we wanted to sort to precinct, for example, then we would run these pieces through again to allow the Agilis to organize based off of what our what we set our pockets to that specific piece. So, and I was actually kind of showing that a little bit earlier, but the pockets that we have here, it's considered within the sort profile, but basically, I have the option to go ahead and change my, my good pocket instead of this on this pass is going to be pre-six, say one through five, and then pocket five is gonna be pre-six, six through 12, or whatever the case is for your respective jurisdiction. Um, and then, after I've gone ahead and configured that, I run through my pieces again, and magically I have uh, pre-six sorted ballots, ballot pieces. So, any questions on that? So, uh, I'd like to just add on sorting. You know, part of, part of my job uh, when we talk about this machine is to figure out what the needs of the county are and uh, whether or not you want to sort to precinct. Um, I find that everyone that I talk to initially is sorting to precinct. They want to be able to have it filed away that way. Uh, the biggest reasons for sorting to precinct that I've heard are to be able to put your hands on a ballot, uh, mail ballot packet if it's challenged, and number two is to be able to tell a voter on the phone that the mail ballot's been received. Um, I, I, I might let Chris talk a little bit about this, but the machine can do both of those things without sorting to precinct. If you want to sort down to the precinct level, we have to, you know we want to configure your machine so you have enough pockets to do that in an expedient way. If you are only sorting to look for a receipt of the mail ballot and um, you know to pull a challenge, basically to find a ballot quickly, you can do that through the audit files and the tray tags. You don't need to spend the county's money on extra pockets to sort to 100 and however many precincts you may have. So I, I, it's a different process, but. Uh, I'm, I'm going to offer my thoughts here as the Dauphin County Election Director. I know a lot of us are. We do it that way because that's the way we've always done it. Um, but really, this enabled us to break away from the need to precinct. There really is no need to precinct your ballots by tray once you get this, because if you need to find a ballot going through the system, it will tell you exactly where it is. So, for example, when you get a ballot back and then you all of a sudden get somebody who moves out of county, moves out of district, uh, passes away, and you get the DOHs from the, the, through the shore system, you will be able to figure out where that ba uh, ballot is and literally go pull it, take this printout from the shore system, staple it to it that the DOH or moved out of county or moved out of state and set it into a separate canceled bin. So it, it enables you to find that ballot like a needle in a haystack, finding it with a magnet, okay? So you don't need to waste your time doing that anymore. And like he said, well, I'll get the end, but let me give you an exact example. We had a voter show up at a poll and they had been registered in the book too. We received their ballot, but they didn't believe it. Within a matter of five minutes, the judge of elections was able to get a picture from us, from there, showing the back of her ballot with her signature and the date and time stamp on it, and said, show this to the voter. We have her ballot. She does not need to cast a provisional ballot. We got it. So those are the kind of things that this enables you to do in, within a matter of minutes that you no longer need to waste all that time that we did putting these into precincts and alphabetize them. And it's just, it's, it, it relieves you of so much stress and pressure. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't understand if we have a challenge on a specific local race, say a district judge, it might mm -hmm. cover five precincts. If they are sorted by precinct, we can pull the trays for the precincts. You understand what I'm saying? But when is the challenge going to occur? I have no way of knowing. Okay, the challenge usually occurs after the election, and it doesn't matter what trays they're anymore because they're already scanned into your system. Once the ballots are removed from the envelopes, the ballot envelopes don't matter anymore. The ballots are now scanned into your central stat right, tabulation. Right, but once they're in precincts, then when you're scanning them, 
they're still in precincts, you understand, so that they'd be easier to pull. But your system can still pull up all the images from those ballots for that precinct. That's cool. Again, but you want to do it, you want to do it, I, I that's fine. I want to understand how I can do a recount if I have to go pull all those individual ballots out of those ballots. We've already made the decision. If we have to do a recount, we're not going to be doing a recount most likely at a localized level. We recount all the ballots then because it's a lot easier to just throw all the ballots through the system to recount and set the system to only count ballots involved in that recount than it is to try and keep all this other stuff. It, it really alleviates an enormous amount of work. So if we have 20,000 ballots, mm -hmm. you're suggesting it's easier to count all of those yeah, than just, run just them off through the, the system again and, yeah. precincts. Mm -hmm. Just drop them in the, yeah. in the central county. Because the, the time you save on the front end is still not gonna be as much as you're gonna spend on the back end. So do you, do you keep, how do you, your paper ballot, not the envelopes, the ballots. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you store and, and organize those, or do you, is it just by well, election? Well, we have target, I mean, again, this may go based on your own individual system. We use clear ballots. So when we're feeding them through the high-speed scanner, we have target cards, mm -hmm. and then we keep them with that target card in an expandable folder, in a box, and we know which bin. So we're able to pull that kind of system by finding out where are these ballots, which bins are they in. So we could run that kind of a report. You just review again for the golf those are here. What is this ticket telling me? Tray five is mm -hmm. the blue tray. Right. Pocket eight, so it came through the eighth pocket. And what is the two one two six referring to? Two one two oh so that's uh that's basically our code. So two one two six would mean that's uh Pass or, no, no, sorry, you're talking about, oh yeah, so that's basically within your specific pass, like whatever you're running there, it's the 21st or 21-26th tray that we have in that pass. Tray or the actual individual ballot that went through? No, it, it would be the tray, not the ballot. So the, the 2,126th tray Correct. that that in that sorted date. on that date? Correct. Correct. Right. So, that so, that so, what so you go to that tray, pull it out, and you find it. Okay. Again, I, I, I would just say we, most of the time if we're doing a recount, we're doing a countywide recount because it's a statewide election. So it doesn't matter. We're running all the ballots anyway. We've not been involved in a recount that involves an isolated subdivision. Well, we get a lot of local challenges. You get a lot of where you're recounting ballots? School board and, and uh, uh, but district again, judge. Again, there's where, okay, so in a situation like that, it's still easier to set this up that it segregates, like we have, how many times? 12 here, okay? So we've got 12 school districts, okay? Two of which we share with other counties. So we could put Susquehanna and Williams Valley in, in one tray, and then the others would be all the other trays, and we'd still have two trays for rejects and, and questionable ballots. So you could still set this that it would go to a school district level. You could set it to what goes to a magisterial district level, depending on how many trays you got. If you really want to sort it, you can keep running them. But in our experience, there's really no need. By the way, it's the machine serial number. It is just the serial number. So all the machines we have, they're, they all have a number labeled to them. So this this one is our 2126 machine. Yeah. Other machines will be 2127, 2128. So this is just ident identifying <laughs> what serial number the machine can have. So in, a, in an example for if you have two agilises, because some of our jurisdictions have multiple agilises that they go out simultaneously, they want to know which machine that got sent through. That's why we kind of have that you know, 2126, and if they add another one, 2127, basically it's easy to that. So Jerry, yeah. what you're saying is per each election, you can reprogram yeah. those yeah. pockets. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's like if this you're election, right. this election, if you wanted, we could have this thing separate them out by legislative districts. Okay, so Commissioner, going to your point, you could pre-sort to a certain level at which you may face a challenge. I doubt we're ever gonna get a situation where you're gonna have a precinct level. I mean, nobody's gonna be fighting over a committee race or judge of elections or inspector of elections. 
But if you want to sort it to a certain level to make it easier for processing, storing, those kind of ballots, yeah, you could do that. I mean, there's no reason it has to be, you know, the, the first couple for the normal sorts and then just automatically the next 250, next 250, next 250. You could say this is magisterial district sort. Well, that, that would satisfy me because I can yeah. think of at least two district judge races off the top of my head yeah. that were challenged. And so, you know, yeah. to have to redo all of them doesn't make sense. But if it's by sorted by, yeah. it, depending on the races, yeah. DJ, yeah. legislative, whatever, that yeah. would make more sense yeah. to me. So, so I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying you don't have to do it. But if you have experienced in your past those kind of challenges, this is big enough that we could use it for county sorting. I mean, enough passes, I could sort it by municipality because we have 40 municipalities, okay? So again, this, this is good enough for us, no matter what we want to do. And so, so again, um, I, I just want to communicate that the, the machine can sort down to whatever level you want it to. Whether it's needed or not is what I need to figure out with you, because that's what I want to, I want to base your configuration on, your needs. So if you tell me you have 500 precincts to sort, that equates to a sort, certain number of uh, sorting pockets you're going to need. Do you really need to, to buy that many pockets? Probably not, but you're certainly welcome to if you have the space. But um, I like to keep in mind that you know there's probably other things in elections that you could use the money for if you don't need to sort and you don't need to spend the extra money on pockets. So those are conversations we can kind of get into individually with what you, you really want to, want to do if you want to get down to an election district. Or Jerry, what was the 40 number you had? The 40 is our municipality. Municipality number, like whatever that number is, we can configure the machine that way. Now, okay. is that jam planned or coincidental? We, 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 we tried to jam the machine a couple times during the demo. So I wonder if you put envelopes in multiple times, how easy well, they get. These are test decks, so, okay. and, and Jerry's been, Jerry and Chris have been nice enough to let us do this quite a few times. So some of the mail has been through like, probably like seven, eight times at this point. So. That was totally planned, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just curious. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, which does lead to the question. I'm sure I know I had this question before. What is the downtime versus uptime? I mean, anything that operates mechanically, you have issues at different points of maintenance or whatever happens. What is your experience? I know you said you use this in a lot of different states. So what is your typical experience? Well, often we can ask. They said positive. I'm just curious throughout your yeah. usage, what, how often, and what is the response time to go fix it if it goes down during, you know, an election. So typically, we try to train people on how to like change belts, like if right. snaps or anything along those lines. We try to train those people to actually replace those on their own. But right. If you guys needed it, if a belt broke today and you guys needed this out here tomorrow or today, we'll try to get out here today. If not, we'll be there by tomorrow. So 20, you're saying 24, 24 hours? 24 to 48 hours is our normal response time. But, okay. Because um, where's the nearest to Pennsylvania that you respond? Where's the tech support to Pennsylvania? Uh, Where are you coming from? Indianapolis. Indianapolis? Yeah. One of the things I'll tell you is we follow their recommendations for maintenance. Yeah. We have them come out and maintain it on their recommended schedule. We do replacement of belts on their recommended schedule we've had three elections with this yeah. and it's run perfectly there was in the primary this year there was an issue with something that had to do with something yeah with the sensors yeah with the sensor yeah basically there's different sensors in there that you can see the little red light right there yeah mm -hmm. and that's to determine place where the ballot is we had uh, when we're opening on election day, we're milling the envelopes open so there's paper that's getting loose that blocks those sensors. But because I don't experience that every day, it was just election day, I didn't know what to do right away. As soon as I figured it out, it's, it's very Yeah, we efficient. called them and they told us to do that. Yeah. And in a couple minutes, we had it back up and running. Exactly. So, again, you, as long as you're maintaining it right. on their recommended, yeah. you know, it's kind of like your car. Yeah. <laughs> your mechanic tells you to maintain, you know, change the oil every 5,000 miles, you better do that. Don't wait 20,000 miles, you're gonna have problems. Mm -hmm. You know, so as long as we're maintaining it. Okay. And so is anybody else in PA using it yet that you know? Dalton, I know, is the one. We, we installed one of our uh, 
smaller sorters into uh, pike this week. Pike? And we're installing this size machine into Lancaster uh, on Monday. What so is the warranty? It's a 90 day uh, factory 90 warranty. days? Factory warranty. But part of the agreement on this is our service and maintenance, software maintenance agreement. So we will uh, be upgrading our uh, software anytime we make changes to it. You get automatic upgrades. The preventative maintenance agreement gets our guys out here uh, once a year to take a look at the machine, make recommendations. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that install, we spend a whole week with the counties teaching their team um, how to use the machine, whoever is going to be designated to use it. Some of the very simple maintenance stuff that Giovanni had explained there. Uh, we spent a whole week uh, working with folks to get them to run the machine, replace the belts, do all those things, and get everybody feeling comfortable. I know it looks like a big machine, but there, there aren't a, a million moving parts in this machine. You have belts that move the mail through it, and you have sensors that, that read everything. But it's uh, it's a fairly simple machine. It's running, it's running, uh, taking pictures, and the, the user service for both parts are are pretty easy to get a hold of. The machine was designed in a way to last. I don't. How long has San Francisco been our oldest customer? Right? How long has they had our San Francisco since two thousand six? There you go. They just they just recently purchased another one. Just one other comment, because the maintenance and uh, preventative part of it is, is certainly something I want everyone to understand. You know, I know that there's election companies out there that, you know, you can call them and you get an 800 number and you get put in a queue and you, you get a request number or a ticket number and then somebody calls you back maybe that day or maybe the next. You know, our company works a lot differently than that. We, our, tech is, our techs are assigned to each county and basically you get a cell phone number for a tech. Uh, that will answer your call. Say that again. I'm sorry. You get a what? cell phone number for your cell tech. Phone number for tech. Yeah, you don't you don't go through a queue or a, a ticketing process. It's um, extremely responsive uh, system that we have for that. And uh, you know these guys are, are ready to take calls basically 24 hours a day. And, you know certainly around election time. The situation Chris was talking about with the sensor was um, election day. So Chris was in here at like 6:30 getting the machine ready. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, one of the things that I think differentiates us is the way that we provide service. Uh, just based on some of the other things I hear from election directors about other companies. Have you had any times, like if I buy a car, I get a three to 10 year warranty, but I also, there's also something called the Lemon Law that if I have it repaired X number of times in the first so many um, months or year, whatever, that they replaced the system. Did you have any that there were just lemons? Uh, well, we've never been through that situation, but in our service and maintenance contract, it's laid out exactly like what would happen in a situation like that. And what I just want to make clear is, it, it, and you, I'm, I, if you haven't seen a copy of our contract already, I can forward it. But um, you know, we're, we're your partners. We're not successful unless you guys are. So, if for some reason, which I've never heard of like us taking the machine back for like a lemon law reason like you've explained. But if for some reason the machine wasn't running, uh, we don't look good, you don't look good, we're gonna take care of that right away. That's what our agreement explains. Okay. So, um, I hope I'm answering that. Uh, to if your it's in the time. contract, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's part okay. of this, the uh, software maintenance uh, agreement is, is, uh, is part of it. Okay. Can I ask a software question? Sure. Uh, so we can repro reconfigure uh, trays however we need. Can we save like profiles for election styles? And Correct, yes. So that's actually the screen that I'm on right now is basically showing you how you can configure a specific pocket. So, you know, after the demo is done, we can always come up and kind of have our breakout sessions and chat about it. But basically, I have my rules that I wanted to add in here. So, for example, if I wanted to sort the precinct, this is basically where I would add those, those rules to say, this pocket corresponds to precincts one through five, as I was talking about earlier. Okay. And then I could just save that as you know election 2022 or something. Correct. Like yes. Then, correct. Okay. So, so, so I wouldn't have to go in and redo everything. I, the yes. less touch on the screen, the better. Is what yes. I'm yes. So you can you can save that sort profile. Okay. So what you, that's that's what you're asking. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, I can create a new one basically. So that makes me wonder if you save a sort profile from like the 2021 election, can you start? 
with that same profile and modify it into a new one, or do you sure. start? Okay, yeah. sure. Okay. And uh, I mean, if, if you have like different municipalities, like every you know, you have your small elections in between odd years mm -hmm. and whatnot, like you can save those different profiles and always refer back to those. Okay. For any election that you want. And you can still refer to those as you're saying, and then change them if you need to change them. Yeah. Or if you want to apply. Yeah. So we don't have to recreate everything. Correct. Okay. That's and there's no there's no limit to how many elections. I have it, it, it has, yeah, it's a plethora of different sort of profiles that are put in there. Yeah. Like, so Cook County in Chicago, they have like, I want to say 60 different sort of profiles just for a sort pass. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can accommodate however many sort passes you need. Yeah. Basically, we'll set it up the way you, you yeah. want to do it, yeah. and we'll show you how to set it up as well and modify it. That's all part of our training. We're So from the office perspective then, every morning, let's say you come in and uh, I'm gonna pull a thumb drive report out of shore. Is that something, I guess we'd auto-generate that report. Uh, is that just a standard report in shore? Is there anything else I need to? Yeah, Canvas Canvas report under the report item asset mailing. Oh, okay. And that's just exported how about on the other end, after you run the stuff at the end of the day, what do you put back in the shore? Um, it, you get a export mm -hmm. and you put it into the bulk ballot update. Okay. And then just solid. however you want to record it. Sorry. Is that what it's called, bulk ballot update? I think yeah. so. We have not had to access yeah, that what, feature yet. So that's that's done in a couple months, yeah. so. That's what gives the voter credit yes. all at once? Okay, I didn't know that was the name of it. Okay. So this sort of follows up on that. We're assuming um, that this software system never interacts with the internet, never, it's self-contained. So we're talking about pulling your report, we take it externally, upload it to shore, right? Correct. There's yeah. no challenge there for, right? It is capable, access. but it's totally optional. You do not have to connect to the internet. And it works for thumb drive, they say. Yeah. Yeah. No internet. Right. It's kind of like yeah. you do with the speech. Right. Um, it might be uh, good for us to mention too, though. We can uh, we could make software updates by remoting into the system, so you could put it online just for us to do that and take it off. So it has the ability to do it, and to get software updates, you, you you'll need to do that. So you need to be networked for when the, those need to happen. Or let's say so. A touch on that though is you guys would totally give us the okay. We would not be able to get it to your system without you guys allowing us to get it. So you guys would have, we would call you and say, can we remote in? You guys would say yes. You guys would literally have to go into the software and allow us to come in before we do it. We don't but just even have Even that portal, you understand, opens up mm -hmm. the counties to having to defend that challenge, mm -hmm. right? No, so yeah, totally. if we don't want to do that, and we no. don't want to give you permissions, Correct. You don't have are to. you physically going to send someone to our location to do the software updates like the SNS and the, and the yes. machine people? Yes, yes. That's exactly. that. And that, you, you probably don't care, but the litigation is just exhausting and ridiculous. I, and, and I want to be sensitive to that. Um, <laughs> federal court come up for it. It's just a complete waste of taxpayer dollars. And it's going to be yep. going on and on and on. You can, you can run this machine effectively with have, having never hooked it to the internet. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's ideal. That's yeah, that is ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the answer to that question for those folks that, that ask you. It doesn't have to be networked at all to work. In the world we live in, that's the only way to hook it up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Understand. All right. Um, some big takeaways from this. I just kind of a couple things I wanted to touch up on. Obviously, we're sending these pieces very quickly through the machine. We're having a digital image being captured there so that you can reference to it at any time. It does our date stamping. It mills our envelopes. Um, and yeah, you just I think the biggest thing is, is obviously having that digital record for you to basically refer to at any time if you get challenged or you know in the, in the story that Jerry was talking about, having that, having that valid envelope available in a matter of minutes, right? Um, Whereas in your, in your previous life, you may have had to spend a lot more time trying to search for a specific ballot. So, um, sorry? Um, um, yes, good, thank you. Um, yeah, and you have, 
you have uh, your date stamper there to basically reference to the, the time that you received that ballot and that proof from there. Also, um, I don't know if they touched on this or not, but the signature cross that we do, I know you guys tend to every now and then update your voter your voter signatures on file. Those are also that's also a feature that you guys can take away from this as well. Is you guys can take those signature crops and update uh, your voter records in the future when you guys get to that that point to they utilize the system to that extent. And remember a lot of the way that the sheets are built around signatures follow some of the legislature and the all vote by mail state. So again the point and, and that's good to mention, but the point being that the machine will grow with you as laws may change or, or may not. <laughs> may or will change, right? Hey, Jerry, do you use the letter opener feature in this? Yeah, absolutely. At what stage? Uh, on, yeah, on election day. Oh, election we can't day. use it before. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to wrap my brain around. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't already have like a high speed opener, I'm sure you could run your regular mail through it too. We have one that's a desktop one upstairs. We also have that one in the back corner there. Mm -hmm. That was our first iteration of dealing with timestamp date opening. That's the one we have. Yeah. 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 It so great. it worked great, but, but this one works a lot better. Yeah, given the volume, yeah. given the fact that that doesn't sort yeah. at all, you know, it doesn't take pictures of it, it's not uploadable to the, this thing, again, let me also offer this to you too, and I don't know whether you guys touched on this or not, but you remember if you're hand manually barcode scanning in the ballots, you know you have to separate them absentees and mail-ins? Because if you get a mail-in stuck in between your absentees, it throws you out and then you don't remember where you stopped and all that. This does anything in any order. It just has to be uh, set up so the barcode's read. So it reads mail-in absentees one after the other. You could do like a, a card deck shuffle mail-in and absentees. You don't have to pre-sort them before you hand scan them, okay? This thing eliminates down to the 0.00001% of misreading or missing a ballot that you've received and upload to, to, the, uh, to the Shore system. You know, I don't know how many times back in the old days when we were hand barcode scanning them in, you know, we knew because of running it through the first system, the, the old machine, that it counted. We had, you know, 1,275 ballots came in. And then we ran the shore report, how many ballots we received, and we had 1,050. Where the hell did the other 20 go? You know, so it gives you a much better feeling that it has properly read every ballot you've run through it. To follow up on that point, the other thing is the ballots get run through here twice. So if it didn't, if you miss it on the first time, it's going to catch it on the second time. And that's another way to ensure that you have every ballot and it was given credit. The other thing I do, and uh, I'd say I and Kelly also does it too, <laughs> is uh, download a report from the Joe's and from Shore, match them up in Excel, make sure everything, every ballot that we received through a Joe's that Joseph said, we've given credit in uh, That's just another way to kind of just make sure that everything was properly given credit. Now let me give you another specific example, and they may have touched on it earlier. But let's say, you know, we're, we're coming up to the point where all the ballots are ready to, and you can send out your first bulk push, and you are sending out a ballot, and someone passes away, you get a DOH, and you cancel them from the record. You cancel their correspondence ID. And then someone tries to mail that ballot back for that deceased voter. This will kick it out. So you are able to capture immediately any of these ballots that come back. So you, let's say you do a cancel replace. Voter calls you, look, I know you sure told me you mailed my ballot out two weeks ago, but I still haven't gotten it. I'm leaving for my trip. So they want you to cancel that one, replace it, mail them a new one. So you do that. And then they mail back their ballot. And they mail back the one that they got later because of delays in the postal service. It kicks it out. And then you can keep an eye on that. And did they ever get their other ballot? Did they try and mail in two? 
we've been able to catch people mailing back the first ballot plus the replacement ballot. Okay? So there's a lot of that gray area stuff. This thing will save you. Any other questions? Uh, maybe just uh, we'll just show the cigarette screen for Chris so they can see. Is it using it to, to weed out the no signatures? It's something that I think most folks are going to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I am basically I have my digital image that I just captured through sending it through the Agilis, and I have my voter reference signature. So this is basically what I'm receiving from short and I'm comparing it against what I just captured. Uh, and then if I if I notice that this voter did not sign, for example, I can go ahead and uh, apply a no signature disposition to this. Oops, I have to sign back in. So that's another kind of security feature that we have as well, that uh, the Agilis will time out if you spend quite a while talking with not the adults, basically. Um, let's go back. I can then go to my no signature and submit, and it has a three-second timer on there to kind of prevent you from, you know, spamming the, the okay, 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 because we actually want you to review the signatures. So, so it says wait a sec, but it's actually more like three seconds. And yeah, essentially, once I've run through my first pass here, then I can go ahead and send that, uh, send all my pieces again through the Agilis, and then it'll sort out all my no signatures if I have that configured, right? It'll sort out my signature discrepancies if I have that. So, so if I could just jump in a little bit. So what we use this this part for, and again, this is this part is after the first initial pass of the mail. So you get your a thousand dollars in the morning, run them through. Um, then you, well, what we would do in the next part would be to take those apps, upload them to shore to give them credit, and then we'd go through the same verification process. What we're looking for here, uh, specifically what we do in Dolphin, is we're looking if the voter signed or not. Uh, we're still gonna sort out if they were defeated or not. Uh, obviously, we all know what the deal is with those, but we're still gonna at least sort those out for the moment. Uh, also, what we're looking for too is if I, you know, Chris back and sign Jerry Fieser's ballot for spouses, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously not looking for if that's their signature, but we're looking for the, the voter sign the same name as the ballot itself. So we're flagging those, and that's what we're doing at the screen. Um, yeah. Do you allow the press to witness this process? Oh my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mr. Yeah. Freeze, we regularly have them come over here and we usually time it to when the uh, the ballots start coming back in earnest. You know, we we will routinely schedule media day. Yeah. He comes over, walks Press him place. around. You know, public assurance. Hey, we're on top of stuff. Here's your ballots. We know where everything's going. We know what's going. On. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. The transparency is what people are demanding. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and let me offer this to you too. We have some of the audit the vote folks in Dauphin County, okay? I've known some of them for years. So I've actually handpicked a couple of them, brought them in, and, you know, kind of did the rubbing the dog's nose in it kind of a thing. Look, see how good this is? And let them go out and be the disciples for us, saying, yeah, yeah, Dauphin County, yeah, they're, they're, they're fine. Nothing to see here. Keep moving. So. I could listen to Jerry talk about <laughs> anything <laughs> all day. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've already bought it. To be <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, if, if we need to, um, on the second run through, let's mm -hmm. say we want to pull out all the undated. Yep. Do you, are you able to reprogram that, or is that a call to them? No, that's what, that's what, that's what this screen is right here. So, so you're, you're doing, doing that, the operator can yeah, the the county is doing this okay. in between the first and second pass. So and we can change that. So whatever we, if we want to go back and check X, Y, or Z, 
Our operator will yep. stand there. Boom. That's not a call. Outside. As you yep. go through the, because yep. what you do is you run them all through the first pass. Right. Then, before you do the second pass, you go through and you look at each one. Yeah. And, and if you see no signature, no date, you can tell it bucket one, bucket two, right? Yep. Okay. Bucket one is all the no signatures. Bucket two is all the no dates. Bucket three is the no date or signature. And then, of course, it automatically sets aside the ones that are light or heavy. No dimensional, dimensional, dimensional reject. Dimensional reject, okay? And I didn't know the term there. But yeah, the dimensional reject. So it's automatically doing that. So or, that's the no privacy envelope. Yeah, the no All privacy envelope. Or, or better yet, the one that I always love, the one who wanted to save the stamp so they put their husband and wife's ballot in oh, yeah. the same envelope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so, I mean, trust yeah. me. But anyway, um, so so it allows you to flag the ballot as you're doing the review, and it'll kick it into that bin. Okay. So it'll kick out any that do don't have secrecy pass, envelopes. That's when it says, as it, as it goes through the ballot, oh, wait a minute, this is the one I need to put in a separate bin because it's yeah. got no signature. Okay. Gotcha. And that's, that's all configurable, too, right? Oh, yeah. based, off of, based off of what your accounting specifically needs. The way that Dauphin has it set up doesn't necessarily mean it's the way that you have it set up, right? So, it's based off of what I've configured those sort profiles to sort to, right, as, as Jerry was referencing. And so if I have a concerned citizen or say a legislator who wants, who files a right to know and they want to see images, they want to see the ballots that were rejected because of missing signatures, I could just generate a file. I wouldn't have to fit, go through all my trays to find them. Sure. Yeah, so like when the Department of State calls and says they want you to sort all those envelopes and yeah. show them ballot signature, you can do it that way. You don't have to go dig through the boxes. Okay? Do you remember that request? I want you to pull every ballot, uh, mail in ballot received in Susquehanna 2 that has the last letter of the first or their last name that begins with the letter B. Boom. That's what they're getting. Okay. It, it's a little hard to see from here, but we have different trays. Like we have a no signature tray, we have a no date tray. Basically, what we do is after the second pass, we put all those ballots in those trays. So we know that that's where all the all the rest of it is. And then all the good ones are put in different trays. So since Dolphin doesn't sort by precinct anymore, right. are you then just dating? Your things like, is it by date then? Well, what it is, yeah. Well, what it is is it's tray. Yeah. Because, like I said, this thing prints out a tag on the first pass. You put the tag in there. Then, when you run through the second pass, it prints out a new tag saying finalized. finalized. That tag you put in that bin. Yep. I said it stays there until we open it. Yep. Okay. And, like I said, if, if Chris Backman moved into Lebanon County, and he's no longer Dauphin County, but I know we've already received his ballot using the shore system in this. I can figure out which bin it is. Go pull the bin, find Chris's, pull it out, print out the moved out of county page out of the shore system, staple it to it, and set it aside. And then if anybody wants to ask questions, well, why didn't Chris Backman's ballot call count? Here, that's why. He's no longer a valid voter in our county. And that goes back into that bin? Goes, no, no, no. It goes back into a canceled bin. Back into the canceled bin. It goes into a can We have a special bin for then anything we have to pull from having been received. Got DOA, right. Yeah. Away. Right. And like I said before, if we send the ballots out and then we get a DOH, okay, and then that ballot comes back, on first pass, it's going to kick it out already. So then we again just go print out the DOH, staple it to that, put it in the canceled. We don't even do a second audit pass on that one, do we? No, we don't. Okay. And again, Joel, I was thinking about the, the whole thing about uh, why do we not really care anymore? If we ever had to do a recount for transparency purposes, let's recount them all. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Recount all the ballots, not just the ones in that race. Let's recount them all. That way, again, X number of ballots. X number of ballots counted, and the count still comes out the same. You follow me? We can have an offline discussion if you. Yeah, I it. follow you. I just don't see the need to do that. <laughs> need to versus transparency. We counted them all. Still came up with the same numbers. But there's a process for challenging, and those that are challenged are the ones you want to count. And we will count them all. Pete, did you want to take over? Sure. So I, I just meant to do this earlier. 
sorry, it's circulate a sign and sheet, that's all. Um, are you running off 220 off a machine like this, or just a standard? It's two, it means 20 two amps. dedicated 20 amp lines. So, two plugs, one. Uh, but it's not like a welder, it doesn't take special electric. No. Well, you have to run that two dedicated 20 amp line to where the machine is going, so. But not a 220. No, not a 220, mm -hmm. it's uh, two of the yes. 20 amp. Just make sure. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yeah, not a 220. Um, a couple other things to cover. Um, I'd like to just, uh, if we have time to maybe break out, uh, just make sure that I understand what the need to your county is with regards to sorting. So I have and I want to make sure that I configure the machine correctly to get done what you want to get done at the county level. Um, I, I do is so expanding into a new space. If we are planning our process for that now, what kind of noise? I, it was. It's not in here. It's not too bad. But if I have two people sitting twelve feet away on the phone, did, do you have other counties that sort of developed any sort of plan and where they put this in relation to their? Well, receptionist or kind of it kind of goes all over the place um, uh, you know it's not incredibly loud you know when you start it up it does make a buzz it, it's got a bell uh, when you turn on the opener it's pretty loud yeah. but aside from that most, most people tend to like put it in an area where it's isolated away from people there I mean obviously if you don't have the space <laughs> yeah. Well, pretty big. <laughs> yeah it's pretty big here but I mean some places don't have the space so well the other thing to keep in mind too is you're not running it all day long you're yeah. running the mail once a day um, most of the counties in the room you know we anticipate a big day of mail is maybe I don't know uh, Chris what's a big day of mail uh, 500 grand thousand pieces maybe thousand was the biggest how many Thousand in one day. Presidential election. So ten thousand is at eighteen thousand pieces an hour. You're running it for two hours. Maybe two max of two hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a big yeah. chunk, you know. That's yeah. I'm surprised to hear you say that. I thought it was going to be way lower, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was on high one. Yeah. Gotcha. It's average presidential two thousand. So the smaller size machine, the middle one, what the process is slower or doesn't have that so that's, time What's the difference? That's a good point. Okay. I wanted to. So so we, we have a, we have three different options of machines to, to service folks with. Uh, the differences are based on volume and speed, basically. So if you told me that you were running six, eight, ten thousand pieces, uh, you know, you're expecting that to come back. I might recommend our smallest machine. If you tell me you want to sort it to precinct, our smallest machine does not sort to precinct. It will do those things with the audit files, it will do those things with signature verification, uh, time and date stamp, uh, automatic upload of receipt of ballot, won't sort to precinct. You need to go up to the middle for the larger machine. So this is the, this is, I, I, I gotta get away from calling it the larger machine because our middle machine is the same physical size, but can run with less pockets. So if you said to me, Pete, we don't care about sorting. We just want to be able to, you know, sort out a uh, no signature and have a thick, thin pocket, you know, the middle machine would be good for you because you can do that with five pockets at a, at a minimum. This one is an eight pocket. So now I'm starting to kind of go all over the place. So, uh, and I know a lot of you guys are hearing this for the first time. So stop me if. It's not making sense. Just before you go on, let me try to understand. The big size for the big market one is the same machine size, just less pockets. Correct. Okay. Uh, this this has a minimum of eight pockets that we can we can install with. Uh, this machine is twelve. Jerry has twelve here. Um, the middle size machine, this helm piece is roughly the same size, and it uses the exact same sorted pockets. So the other thing to mention too is the machines are modular, so you can add more pockets if you decide later on you might have a need. You know, maybe legislation causes a need for more pockets. We can add pockets to it. Um, What's the price for the machine as it's set up right now? Uh, the current price for a 12-pocket Agilis with an opener, um, 
way of testing me. It's uh, got to be three thirty. Three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yep. A twelve pocket machine with an opener, right? Yeah, it's including an opener. Yeah. I can follow. I, can, I mean, I'll certainly follow up with quoted writing, but I'm just trying to give you a basic idea. So if you, the middle machine is is less money, but it's also less speed. Less what's that? Less speed. Is it? Do you have double the time yeah, to the process speed? or? The, speed? the middle machine processes at forty five hundred mm -hmm. pieces per hour. So think of about a third. This is eighteen thousand. So that's all we need is the middle one. Okay. So depending on if you want to source the precincts. Okay. You know those are those are More the questions that I need to figure out to figure out what to write. Oh, yeah. So the other thing to mention is machine availability figures into this as well. Our middle size machine is hasn't been sold into the field yet. Our, our first installs are planned for next month, or end of this month, beginning of October. And how much floor space would the middle machine take up compared to this machine? Is it half the same Same footprint? Yes, it's not, a, it's not an economy of space. It's the same space. The only difference is I, I have the ability to sell the middle machine with only four pockets. And then there, we have a, a, a fifth pocket that hangs off the end for rejects. Um, so it, it would be like this size would be the, the minimum size on the top, but you can also add up to 12 pockets onto the top. Pockets the, the name for the middle size machine. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. I do have some spec sheets on all these things that you're asking. If you to take away from my goodie table over here, so please take them. Um, biggest differences are the speed and the availability. So I, I didn't really have the ability to install a mid size machine for the, uh, the general because of just where we were in development. Uh, a lot of the counties that I'm talking to, we're planning to install that for the uh, primary next year. How long does it take to get from the time you order it and it's installed? Ideally, uh, we like to have eight to 12 weeks. Uh, there are things that can shorten that, but I, it's, it's difficult um, to, to kind of plan based on, on those things. The easiest way is to plan eight to 12 weeks. So. For example, uh, if you were to say, Pete, we really think the Falcon's right for us, we want to sort it to this many precincts, and we want to have 12 pockets on it, we want to use it for the primary, I would say the, soonest, the sooner you can give us a, a signature on a contract, the better, and we can plan the delivery for whatever you want. So I'm trying to get contracts signed by the end of the year for uh, install for the primary. Well, you guys have been very good in answering the questions. I want to say thank you for that. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad we had answers for everybody. That's why I bring a whole army of people, because I don't, I don't want to miss a question. Yeah, well, we don't want to go away with regrets that we didn't ask questions. Well, and, you know, feel free to call me anytime. If I don't know the answer, I can get to these guys. Okay. Um, you know, uh, yes, sir. Ballot printing. All right, so if we, actually, you guys are great. Okay. If the commissioners would want to go with a different ballot vendor, do we have to follow this format or does the machine adapt? So the only thing um, I have to say that we'd be happy to print your envelopes for you if you'd like. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> but uh, certainly uh, Jerry uses another uh, print vendor. Um, uh, Luzerne, who's here, uses a different print vendor. What we need is uh, the, the voter uh, correspondence ID barcode along with the signature. But this is a print. So this, this is where like a signature would be. It needs to be on the same side. Mm -hmm. Our machine, when it hits this camera, it needs to see all that information in one place. As long as that information is on the same, on the right side, on the, the same side, that's all we need to do. To do. Yeah. So, are you asking about actual ballots? Uh, I should have said on the like just to the yeah. vendor. Right. Yep. I just want to make sure because the packages we're seeing as we're looking at vendors right now, they all look pretty different, yes. uh, very different uh, from what we currently have. Yeah, as long as the barcode is, as long as it's all on the same side, yeah. Okay, we can make it work. Let me offer something too. I mean, our first experience with Pete was back in late 2019, after Act 77, and you know, the dust settled and everything. Like, what the hell did they just pass? I called Pete and I'm like, talk to me about mail in ballot. What do other states do? What do they see? What's the volume? And he's like, well, you know, 50% of their voters or more will go to mail in ballot. 
Everybody else we were talking to heard 50% increase in your absentee ballots. No, I heard what he told me. 50% of your voters will go to mail -ins. So that's why immediately we went with a mail house in primary 2020, because I knew we were gonna handle the volume. And you know, once we got this, he was the first one I went to. Now we did not go with them for ballot printing, ballot mailing, all that stuff. We went with local printers, um, Pennsylvania based. But everybody who I've heard use them, they love them. But you know, for our purposes, we wanted to stay local. But you know, Pete, Pete has been very helpful going through the entire process. I'm glad we got to work with him on, on this device. And you know, I know there's other products out there. They may be good. But again, for those of you who know me, I value relationships. I value the fact that if I want to call him, I'm calling him, I'm getting him, and he's calling me back. So I value that kind of a relationship with the company. I don't want to get into, you know, press one for this, press two for that, and you never know who's going to call you back or show up. I know these guys, all right? I know Matt Swisher, who's not here. So, I, I value our relationship. Hey, Pete, before you fly out, uh, one of the things that we probably should talk about is with the printing side of this, yep. uh, addressing with our Board of Elections, uh, in-state versus out-of-state, maybe get some numbers. Yep. We need to start getting some of those yeah. details. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you about that. I, uh, one other thing, I, and thanks, Jerry, for the kind words. I appreciate that. I mean, we're, you know, I, I look at this as, we have stuff that can help you guys. You know, is it going to make sense in every county I talk to? Maybe not, but I, I think it's uh, it's good equipment, and we have a great team to support it. So uh, I appreciate that, Jerry. It's great to be talking with you guys. I, I I just mentioned about printers. You know, I said at the beginning of our talk, Runbeck's been printing ballots since 1972. I know that since legislation changed in PA, there's some printers have been taking over. Um, printing ballots for counties. We have a, a, a massive 160,000 square foot ballot printing plant out there. Uh, we're looking at printing over 30 million ballots just for this uh, 2022 general cycle. Uh, we've been doing it a long time. Uh, everything we do is, is uh, uh, centered around elections. We're not a company that you know does a whole bunch of industrial printing and other services and just does elections every once in a while. We're 100% elections. Uh, focused so uh, most of our customers uh, at this point are the vote by mail states out west Colorado Utah Washington uh, Arizona California Hawaii um, Oregon uh, that whole big chunk out there are, are, are states that helped us to grow as a company and we grew by providing additional services and, and ultimately created the portfolio of products that, that we have today to, to work with folks on so in addition to our inbound mail ballot sorting equipment, um, uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, an elections printer, so we, we print mail ballot packets. We do everything from uh, voter notification cards to uh, opt-in for mail ballots. Any kind of elections mailing that's tied to the voter registration system is really uh, what we're good at. Uh, we can do the basic stuff, too, like it doesn't involve variable printing, the, the static printing, but uh, we really add value incorporate your voter registration into the mailings that we're doing. So uh, that's, that's just something to keep in mind from us. We also have ballot on demand printing systems uh, that roll right into your polling places, allow you to scan an ID, print out a ballot for uh, the voter that's in front of you without having to have thousands of ballot styles available and uh, what ends up in a lot of cases being a lot of waste. Uh, so we provide ballot on demand printing. Uh, we also um, have a voter uh, sorry, petition management software system that uh, helps to digitize your petitions, compare your signatures to your voter registration, and allow that to allow that, that to determine whether signatures are valid. We have a duplication system, which uh, helps uh, recreate damaged ballots or UACABAs so they become uh, tabulatable. Um, I think that covers it. I think that's the, oh. And the last thing, I have some, some sheets over there is our, our uh, voter vote center hubs, which can hold your ES&S or your Dominion equipment uh, as a voting booth. 
uh, for secure uh, transportation and uh, kind of a plug and play solution where you set it up in your warehouse, you roll it into your polling place, and you basically open the cabin doors and the voters can vote from it. So I, I'm, I'm not getting into many details on these products, I'm just trying to give you an overview of uh, what we do, but um, we have more election centric and Think about it every every day, all day, and mostly through the weekends, especially during election season. Yeah. Printing 24 hours a day. So, um, hey. yes. Are there any plans to develop a, like a ballot opening system that would open uh, yeah, the envelope and the secrecy? Extracting. And, yeah. Um, I don't have any. You no, know, uh, that's not something that's come up as part of the development. One comment I would make on that is I've learned in, in the East Coast that there's legislation that prevents automation for extracting those things. I don't know if that's the case in PA, but I know in, in New Jersey that that extraction was, was against what the Secretary has explained in the law was. I do know other offices of that kind of equipment, but I thought if there was something, and we're gonna we're gonna look at that, but I just thought if there was something that you folks have had, yeah. then it just might be a nice one. Yeah, yeah, to extract at the same time. The machine that I've seen, uh, the guys at Formation, mm -hmm. it, it, it opens it, but a human has to pull it out. Okay. So if it puts one in front of you that opens it, a human pulls it out, okay. which, which saves time. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I know of that company, I've heard there. Pretty much everybody has something from them already anyway. But, um, that's the only solution I know of that at the moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so that's a little bit about Runback. Uh, of course, today we're here to talk about inbound mail ballot sorting systems. Uh, Dauphin County purchased this Agilis for the primary in 2021. We were setting it up in March, February, March of 2021. So they've been using it for uh, a few elections now. Um, check-in of the ballots, uh, the uploading in, into the shore system of the, ballot, of the date received, and a lot of the things we're going to go through. I, I handed out this sheet in front of you, which we're going to go through all those points, but I like the idea, the visual of it, it, it really it, especially when you're not, you know, you have no automation now, and you're trying to picture how this system could fit into your office and what people will do as the mail comes in, it just kind of takes you step by step uh, how we could, how it's going to help out. Um, so my goal is to just get everybody a good understanding of what the machine does and uh, what it's going to eliminate uh, you know, for folks having to do uh, by hand in your office. There's uh, several bullet points that, that kind of are the highlights. We're going to run the machine and then um, talk about processes and questions. So um, you know, with that, I think, I think the best thing to do would be to turn it over to Nabil and he's going to just run the machine and show us how it works. Yeah, so I mean, as far as what, how the process is started, obviously we are going to first import our, our uh, ballot information from Shure, the voter registration system, and we are going to upload it into our software. But basically, before I, before I get into actually running some pieces, I wanted to kind of explain a little bit about how, excuse me, about how this uh, sort of procedure is, is set up for the first first uh, pass that we run. So our first two pockets are reserved <coughs> as rejects as we can see here and, and this entire screen is basically configurable to your to your uh, preferences. So Dauphin County as of right now has it set up so that it is pockets uh, 4 through 11 are all considered good pockets which means that the voter is within this specific election, he belongs within that, uh, that ballot input file that we just imported, and doesn't have any thickness or, or thin, which the Agilis is equipped with as well, so it's, if it's too thick or too thin, or uh, basically some physical rejects. So for example, if the envelope is upside down or if it's backwards, which I actually shuffled a couple in here to, to illustrate that as well. So with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and Run some pieces. So, uh, just to elaborate a little bit on what you're saying, is 
take a file from the shore system, show the Angelus what the mail is that's going to be coming through, so we have something to match up. That's basically what happens. It's done through a thumb drive. Um, you know, there's no direct connectivity. It's not on the internet. It's not any of these uh, kind of things we all read about in the news. Uh, but you take a thumb drive with your voter reg file from shore. You upload it into the system, and that way, as the mail comes through, it, the system knows which voter records match it up. During uh, the election season, you want to do that every day, because I think your voter reg changes moment to moment uh, during those times. <laughs> All right, so we may get a little noisy when I start these bells, but as we're as we're running some pieces, I'll kind of talk about what's what's happening. Uh, yeah. So as I release. Or as I start to sense a piece of